Hi, this is Christopher, and this is my character, Panopticon, a wizard on Diablo 3. I was reading your blog post on what it means to be a lesbian gamer, and I myself am a queer gamer, and I strongly identify with my character here, Panopticon, to, who to me seems very queer. And I think a lot of that has to do with the role of strategic ambiguity that comes into play in this uh, particular representation. It's not very clear what race Panopticon is. He's not really white. He's not really Asian. It's just not real certain what his race is. As well as his sexuality, the way he moves is very fluid, what you might typically expect of a wizard. But the way that he communicates, too, to the Templar, the Templar is his cohort in the game and he's very butch I would say he likes the girls in the game and is always commenting on how pretty they are but uh, Panopticon he has these scripted responses and he will usually say things that encourage the Templar or that nurture the Templar but don't necessarily say yeah she's really pretty or she's really hot so it just makes me wonder are the developers thinking more about the role of strategic ambiguity to make their games more appealing to everyone instead of the standard hypersexualized characters we typically see. Wow, Christopher, thanks for your question. I think it's a great one on the notion of strategic ambiguity when you talk about character creation. Um, I, I would like to start by saying, one, I have great hopes that people would create um, characters that are more... Um, that are more generic or ambiguous. Um, and there, there's a good reason for that. And that is because I think that it then gives ga gamers with different characteristics who may be of different races, who may be of different um, sexual orientations, who may be of different biological sexes, um, the opportunity to better identify with those characters. Um, and I would also say, but at the same time, I will say, but at the same time, I will say, I think that we see that more often in characters that are created by um, Japanese developers than we do by gamers that are develop games that are developed in the U.S. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, I I love your question, um, and I think this fits really well with the questions <coughs> that we had um, in the rest of our show. Um, and I so just like we want, I want to see a gamer who is female. Um, or people want to see gamers that maybe are Native American or African American or um, what have different sexual orientations. You also want characters that are ambiguous, that you can make of them what you want. Um, not just so that you can see part of yourself in them, although I think that's a huge part of it, especially mm -hmm. for me, but so that you can make of them what you will. And when we see the default characters for so long being like the Templar in your question, the heterosexual male, oh, she's so hot type of characters, you can't make, a lot of people can't make of that what they want, the kind of character they want to identify with. So when you see these more ambiguous characters, I think that it opens it up and says, people who think all different types of things belong here, here's a character for you. But that said, I also still want to see a definitely x y or z character as well as ones that are left purposefully strategically ambiguous and i think that panopticon is a really good your character panopticon is a really good example of someone that is an inclusive character that isn't so defined to be exclusive to different types of players so that is what i have to say nicole <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just thinking about how, and we, we kind of talked about this, I, I feel like we talked about this almost in a, a recent episode about how a lot of people play um, the opposite gender of themselves in WoW mm -hmm. because of the interaction that the female characters end up having. And I think that that's almost something that I, I like kind of what you were saying, Alex, is that you would hope to see that it wouldn't have those kind of things set with whatever you choose your character to be. Mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely I don't play enough MMOs to understand fully like the amount of interaction that is based solely on your avatar. But I do know that a lot of it surrounds that, and I think it's really interesting to create one that has no like stigmas put to it. 
and like how that interaction would almost be totally organic instead of set to what we expect to see with a character like that. You know, I was thinking, I was just whispering to Sam, like, I don't think there's a lot, but now that I think about it in like games like Skyrim and stuff, there's a ton of interaction that's based on your class and your history and all of that mm-hmm. stuff, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But in games like, like wow, almost, a, almost a, um, whole sections of the game are based on that, I feel like. I think like reputation points, the, fr- the more that powerful they get. And the more backstory that gets incorporated into, mm-hmm. like, quantifiable measures, like, you have X respect, or uh, that Crusader Kings, um, that game, if you, like, are a male of this of this country, you will have respect with these types of people, disrespect right. with these, religious people will always hate you, loyalists will always love you, whatever it is. Absolutely. And I think that the games, the technology is getting complex enough that we can put the, those things into the games more often, which allows for more customized interactions. And I think that the games have been been playing at that for a while because I think the first time I can remember paying close attention to that was probably with Oblivion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, now after Oblivion, it's almost expected anyway of me. Yes, I agree. Or by me, I when I start thinking about RPGs and even MMORPGs, is I, I expect folks around me to respond to me based on who I am. Yeah, definitely. Especially in um, Kingdoms of Amalur. Yeah. Depending yeah. on who you are. That was a yeah. huge element to that game. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that was a great question. Yeah. I liked that one a lot. That's mm-hmm. fun. Thanks. Thank Thanks Christopher. again, Christopher. <laughs> and...